welcome to an episode of Lifting Your Spirits. Um, today I talked to a friend of mine, an Australian man named Jules. Uh, he has many restaurants in Berlin, mostly Mexican themed. Uh, so we talk a lot about that. And uh, he has his own hot sauce. He makes, you know, one of the best uh, chicken burgers in town. And uh, we talk about, you know, the plight of social media, working in gastronomy, and our hatred of the misuse of the apostrophe. Um, I'm going to make him a lovely drink, the Mescal Negroni. So, yeah, there'll be a link uh, in the description where you can watch the deep dive of that cocktail uh, where I go a little bit more in depth of, you know, the how, the why, the who of a cocktail. Um, also in your peripherals will be a link to buy me a coffee. There you can peruse at your leisure um, all the things that I do. Um, and if you want, you can buy me a coffee. And you don't have to buy me a coffee, you can just have a, have a cruise. So enjoy the show, and I'm very glad you're listening. All the weird bits of alcohol Your spirits, where I'm going to show you how to make a proper banging cocktail and then take that cocktail to my friend who's waiting in the West Wings and we're going to have a little chat about life and about things and you and everyone watching are all invited. Today I'm going to show you a mescal negroni. Yeah, that's right, a mescal negroni. You can put mescal in a negroni. You can put loads of things in replacement of gin in a Negroni. For now, I'm just going to show you a quick version of this and then get to my guest with it. But in your peripherals, there's a link to the Mescal Negroni, a deep dive, and that's where I go much deeper into the cocktail itself. That's for the cocktail geeks out there, and you can make it along with me step by step. But for now, let me show you how to make a Mescal Negroni. To start us off, this is what we need. It rips the heart out of the agave plant, which weighs about 40 kilos, and it's thrown in a hole like some heartbroken blues singer. We're going to put 40 mils of our smoky mescal in, okay? Just ever so slightly a little bit extra. Kind of just gives it an extra bit of a punch, you know? Um, next on the list, is our French sweet vermouth. We're all familiar with this when it comes to Negronis. Uh, we're going with 30 mils of this, by the way. There's something not quite right. Try a vermouth. Next on the list, of course, we're making an aperitivo. It has to be Italian. We need another 30 mils of our oh, wonderful fruit liqueur. What I want to do is I want to add in some Angostura bitters. We use this quite a lot here at the Wandering Barman. This is super easy to make because you can just make it in the one glass. We need our ice. I mean, you know what it's about. What we want to do, slowly stir this. And there we go. And for this, I don't uh, need any orange zest. I want that just to remain as it is. All right, let's take this uh, to my guest and see what he has to say. Two things. Um, this guy uh, is a bit of a legend in Berlin. Uh, comes all the way from Sydney. He's like a massive entrepreneur, is the founder of Perry's Chicken and makes his own hot sauce. It's only Jules from Sydney, everyone. How you? Uh, I thought I'd make you. I thought I'd make you a mezcal negroni yeah. because of your Mexican, almost like honourable heritage. That's good. Yeah, that's good. You're it's, like the. It's. It's. I, I love the smokiness of the mezcal. Yeah, man. yeah. I mean, when you do a mezcal cocktail, right? It's. Uh, they they make amazing cocktails. Really yeah, good. yeah, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, I man, I, I thought I'd have to go mezcal because yep. of your. You know, you're the. You're like the Mexican guru. 
of uh, of, of Bell and Man. I mean, you've uh, you've been here. I mean, maybe you can just give a wee small introduction as to like for the for my two hundred thousand followers. <laughs> uh, you know, like they need to know who you are, man. So um, yeah, the whole Mexican thing. I've travelled pretty extensively through Mexico. So I went there um, as a twenty year old, I think, and I've been back twice since. Aye, and where um, else, man? So I started off in Mexico City, where I've been uh, every time I've visited. I've gone to Mexico City. Okay. It's the obvious place to sort of land. And um, my first trip, we went across to the Yucatan Peninsula to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, and then we got a car and drove inland and went right through uh, Chiapas wow. and to Oaxaca and along the Oaxacan coast. Now we're talking. Okay. Um, that was an amazing trip, um, and that was that was really my first time actually seeing the world traveling. So so twi- so you're from Sydney, man. You hadn't done much exploring. No. Uh, you just get, and then so why Mexico, man? Um, so I had a friend who was studying abroad. He did an exchange, and he'd never been he'd never been overseas at all. I'd been overseas a little bit as 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 a kid, and he just he told me he said, "Man, you have to come. This is so good." Um, yes, and right, he said, okay. "The food the food's amazing." And I said, "Mexican food's good. What do you mean? Isn't that like the fucking old El Paso fucking yeah, yeah. tacos, burritos?" Like exactly. That. And he said, "Man, we have no idea what Mexican food is." Be- and because, that, because we're kind of Tex-Mex, we're too fucking we're, the burritos yeah. and that. Yeah, well, um, basically at that at that point, it was Mexican cuisine was was not that well known. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's now it's trendy as hell. Like you can go anywhere and you can find good Mexican food. Um, sure, a decent Mexican food anyway, but. Um, and he told me, and I was, I'd just finished university, so yeah, must, no, I must have been 18, 18 at the time or something. And I just thought, fuck it. Um, I was working as a, no, I was, I was already at uni. I had three jobs. I was a bartender. I was a forklift driver. Forklift driver? I, I, I ran poker, poker tournaments and, um, and I was studying full time. Um, what were you studying of interest? Um, at that point, I was doing um, an arts degree majoring in psychology and philosophy, but I... I switched out after two years right, and, okay. and, and finished doing writing, sort of journalism. Right. Um, but yeah, and I just thought, fuck it, like I'll, I'm just gonna go. Um, it was it was the end of the year, so we had two months off, and it was just my f- first real adventure. Just saying, I'm just, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna buy a plane ticket and fucking go over I there. Fucking and I went over that, there man. for for three months. Um, and yeah, the the cuisine, the food just absolutely blew me away. Okay. And um, it was something that I sort of, I became probably a bit of a bit of a dick a bit of a um food snob so my friend said oh we're going to this mexican restaurant and i'd say ah, that's not real mexican i'm not coming well, or, or, or when you were back in sydney anywhere anywhere, anywhere i anywhere. was so and we'd go to a restaurant and i'd say no it shouldn't be like this this is crap this is crap and uh, that can be a bit of a bit of a downer um <laughs> so, for other people good for a fucking yeah, dinner so I'd, I'd basically just not go to mexican restaurants <laughs> and um and then i ended up working at white trash in the kitchen here ah uh, yeah um, white trash man was that then where Schoen, where, schoenhauser Ali. oh the so old school one right across from the comedy club that's right yeah. that's right um, that was a cool place man were you what were you cooking there or? i eventually worked my way up to cooking so um i was traveling again in argentina and i came back with no job and my friend um, from Peru said that he'd get me a job in the kitchen there. And I started off carrying plates. He got himself fired. I took his job. Why did, and, how did you get fired? Oh, uh, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of <laughs> naughtiness going on there. I can't remember exactly what okay, it was for. But okay. um, he actually, funnily enough, ended up working for me a bit later. And he, ended, he was after three months, he said, well, this is the longest I've ever had a job for. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah. <coughs> But I ended up just working my way up and um, eventually cooking with this guy from Texas um, who said that he wanted to open a place um, and he was really into authentic Mexican food. And I wanted to open a bar with my Mexican friend. Yeah. And I said, why don't we just do this together? And we and that was back in 2009. And that, was that Santa Maria? That was Maria Bonita, which, Maria. Is, which is still there. Oh, shit. On Danziger So. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we, we, we threw in five grand each. Uh-huh. And fucking opened, and um, back we were making our own tortillas, we were making our own salsas, and back then everything was word of word of mouth. There was um, Facebook existed, but social media was a, a new thing. So yeah, I, um, I, man, smartphones were even. I don't remember really having a smartphone in two thousand nine. I, I got a smartphone like, in two thousand thirteen when I got my dog, yeah. just to take photos of my of my puppy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So um, yeah, we opened that up with nothing, and we did a, a, a soft opening. Um, with, with free food just to try out the dishes mm-hmm. and there was a, a fucking queue of about 150 people just going down the street nice. and this is all word of mouth no no advertising no posters 
no nothing. And um, so we sort of rode that buzz. We were the first authentic Mexican place in Berlin, really, with spicy sauce, spicy food. Yeah. Um, and we, me being the, the poor decision maker that I am, we, <laughs> we ended up opening another two restaurants within nine months. And right. everything pretty much fell to pieces. So, um, well, I mean, dude, I mean, how the, because, you know, in my, you know, in my younger, my younger, more irresponsible days, I always kind of wanted to open up a bar, right? But now that I'm 35, man, I'm like, fuck that. Like, even if someone gave me like 40 grand to open up a bar, I think I'd be like that. I, I don't think I can, man. It, it, just the hours alone, because it's, you're the one person, man. You're doing everything, you're 17 hour days, you're cleaning toilets, you're cooking, you're making stuff, you're... And honestly, a lot of the time, it's more stressful taking days off than it is just to, just to power through. Because um, if I, often I take a few days off, depending on who I've had working, you have, go through periods of having a good team or a bad team. And I take two days off and I come in and I just fucking lose my mind because, because nothing's the way I want it to be. People have, haven't been doing what they should be doing and it's just almost not worth taking days off. So, yeah. you know, back in those days when we opened the three restaurants, um, so gradually the, the Texan guy left when we opened the second one. And then we just thought, fuck it, like we already, we already have to open a third one, which was Santa Maria. Okay. So the second one was the sort of ill-fated Maria Peligro. I don't know if you ever went there. I don't think I ever did. It was... Where we, was it? Where was it? It's on Scarlet to Strasbourg. Oh, I did go so, there. I did go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. probably went there for a party. So we... Um, <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah. There, we ended up having like five different partners there and I was working, <laughs> I was working 19, 20 hours a day and the, the guys, my partners there were, were working you know, five, six hours a day. And, well, um, these are the guys coming in at the end of the night with, with all their pals and uh, just getting the free booze and, and kind of like swinging their dicks and saying, I want this place type thing, whereas you were the backbone. Yeah, I was doing the cookie and they, we, had, we had me as, as the only person in the kitchen and, um, and I was also working in the other two restaurants and the other, all four of them were working on the bar and there was a, there was a lot of partying going on. Right. Um, and I, I left that business after a year um, How did you kind of buy out or did you just I, well, kind of... Well, I'm, I'm not very good at business uh -huh. um, and I'd signed a lot of contracts. Because you're too nice about it or because... I, no, because I'm just stupid. Um, <laughs> I, I, got, I, I was no, trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. No, no, no background in any of this. So okay, basically, okay. I, I just learnt as I was doing it. Um, we all did. And so I left the business. I officially left the business, but my name was on all the contracts. And right. sort of within a year, I was actually in Mexico at the time, they went bankrupt and closed down and oh, they right. all left. They, everyone split the country and my name was still on all the contracts. So I got hit with all the open bills, which was about tax 40, 40,000 euros. Ew, that's um, painful. That's painful. It's, and it, you know, I keep doing these things to myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I, I can make successful businesses. Um, people sort of like what I do. But I'm terrible at business. I'm so, so yeah, you're, but you've still got, you're still rocking some businesses, man. Santa yeah. Maria's still going. Mm -hmm. And you've got Perry's Chicken, which is, uh, you know, uh, debatably what was some of the, the best chicken burgers in town, man. Thank you. Um, and you've got, uh, you've got your Perry's uh, hot sauce as well on the go, yeah. man. Yes. And um, I see you already have a few, but... Um, I brought you some anyway as a, as a present. Thank you, man. Um, I and that. you have a, quite a lot of your guests involved in in this. I do. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. Ben Smith, who's been on here. That's right. Um, he's designed all the labels. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another one, and you've got the Armageddon. I've got I've over got, there with, the, I've with got these. An, I've uh, got another couple of here like that. I'm yeah. rocking. I'm, I'm. I've got this fucking covered, mate. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, so well, yeah. I don't have those. The pennies. There you go. Now you do. Cheers, brother. Um, so yeah, so so Ben does the artwork. Um, yeah, Ben Smith, episode five, I think. Go check that out. And then the right. last episode. Oh my god, that smells amazing! It's yeah, it's a, that it's liquid crack. Yeah, really. yeah, that's, that's, um, that smells absolutely banging. Okay, it, nice. They're distributed through Chili Punk. Boom, Mister Neil Numb. Neil, Neil is distributing that. So um, yeah, along. Neil, Neil and I have been getting together quite a bit lately with his sort of love of chili, and um, you know every every food that I do is spicy food. So yeah. I, I also specialize in making laksa, which is a Malaysian soup. Um, yeah, the Mexican food and. And Piri's, which is which is, I'm I'm 
relaunched periods during lockdown essentially so yeah. the day we the day they said you have to close your restaurants you can do takeaway and delivery and i said fuck it i'm gonna do periods again yeah because i used to own periods the restaurant which closed down that was on gula no, yeah, 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 so that one, closed yeah, yeah. down i think in 2017 i can't even remember the years oh um, the restaurants man nuts yeah so um and i thought fuck let's let's do this because mexican food isn't i don't think it's great for takeaway it's a lot of yeah, it it get, can get a bit soggy. It can get um, a bit soggy. It can get a bit stodgy. Yeah, so I mean, you tacos I, I, don't travel well. Well, if you keep everything wrapped separately, it's 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 better, but it's also a pain in the ass to take tortillas, wrap them in foil, box everything up separately, give all the salsas. And then it, you've got there's a lot. Of, it's a it's, it's a bigger carbon footprint. You know, you're using all these little individual plastic tubs the, for your salsas and your sauces and, and stuff. You know. Yeah, and the another thing about Mexican food, and um, I am slowly. Actually, maybe not that slowly. I may not actually have any more Mexican restaurants at the moment. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the lockdown's not been kind to Santa Cantina, which is my, I think, sixth restaurant or fifth. It's, it's one of your, sure. Yeah, it's one of your flagships, uh, though. It's one yeah, of your, uh, it's, you know, we, we, actually, we actually had our best ever summer last summer, but winter's just been brutal. Um, yeah. People aren't going out and buying food. I guess people are running out of money. People aren't getting home delivery. I think what um, happened in the first lockdown, man, back in uh, March 2020, like that kind of March, April, May, you know, everyone was having fun, man, because everyone was like, oh, I'm happy to take, I'm happy for my work to take, to have time off and for my work and the state to give me money. Yeah. And there was all these, like in Berlin specifically, man, there was these like huge fund, uh, these grants that everyone was applying for. So... People were getting thousands oh, of no. euros. And they're all going to have to pay them back. In yeah, 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 man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I can't wait because I'm, I, thankfully, I'm one of the legitimate ones because I'm a full-time artist. So I yeah. was like, that. I'll take that five grand, no worries. And I can completely bullshit, get all my books in an order, right? But see these wee bastards, man, that were like students and they were already getting money oh, and they just thought it was free money. Yeah, it's coming back for you, man, because this one, is Germany, man. One thing that I've learned in my years here, it's you can't, you can't fight the system. You can't, they <laughs> They've got fuck you. Fuck you, and I've been, I've been fucked so <laughs> many times oh, in every that possible big, way. I actually, German bureaucratic actually have a, a, um, an ambition at some point to write a kind of guide to how not to open a business in Berlin and because uh, because I I think I've made almost every possible mistake. Oh no, man, make. shit. Um, but you know it's all learning, right? So yeah, so, man. Le you know, le learn as you do. I, I'm I'm a huge huge fan of that, man. You know, I yeah. Uh, that's how I done all my cocktail and stuff, man. Like yeah. just you know, uh, didn't go to like a cocktail school or anything. But when you know, as you probably know, when you're doing like twelve or twelve or days, five four five days a week, five days a week. You you you're just doing nothing else but making cocktails. Yep. You can't be anything else but good at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, so what's what's next on the agenda, man? For you, man? Like what's so what's... so basically? Um, as I was sort of getting towards the the lockdown, made me think. Okay, I can relaunch this brand, Piri's, which um, it's it was a much loved restaurant when we had it. Yeah. But it was in a. It's not a dicey area, but it, it looks a dicey area. So anyone who's been to go to park knows the nature of the park. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know how to explain it, it for people overseas. Well, it, the like, thing is, when when I first walked through there, it 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 looks scary. It looks dodgy. It yeah. looks like you might get mugged. Um, so basically, if you don't know the park, there's it's a there's a lot of African guys there, um, and they're they're selling weed. Yeah, yeah. it's not bad because the African guys. No, are there. no, no, it's no. Just, but it's just it, bad because what they're up to. It it looks shady, and they 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 go. Psst, when you walk past there's a lot of gangs but they're friendly as fuck they so really I, are. I, 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 live, yeah. I live there I live behind the old periods yeah yeah so I walk through there every day, every day with my dog I say hi to everyone they're yeah, all really yeah, nice yeah. guys um, uh, I, there's it, just so many it, it, it just it, it, if you're a foreigner if you're, if you're a tourist it yeah, yeah, feels yeah. like you shouldn't be there that, that feels like a no-go zone if you're For in sure. any other city if, you, if that was in Sydney you, there's no fucking way you'd go through yeah, 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 so yeah. basically we were situated there the street itself was pretty poorly lit, and um, it's about it was a few blocks away from the train station, you know, which is yeah, which in yeah, Berlin yeah. is is 
a few blocks is a long way. People, yeah, yeah. people are very lazy. They don't but want to travel. You, yeah, and it's weird because you were actually in a fairly good stretch, right? Because you've got, you had like, you were in between like Glogarstrasse and Olaustrasse, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. And that's like, down those streets towards, uh, going towards Northern Kreuzberg, like, that's where it starts to get a bit busy. You've also got some nice bars. You know, you've got the fire station. Yeah. Opposite that. Yeah. You've got the, but, a couple of these, like, uh, Madonna's. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Like but that. It's, it, it's, it's, it was just one, one block, one, one block, block too far, far. which, we, yeah, if you're in the, okay, if yeah. you're in the UK or Australia, then that people will travel for that shit. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. would in summer. In summer, it was crazy because we had a huge terrace, and we'd have we had block parties. We used to have DJs in the window, and, and just, right. yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah. great. Like uh, the first few years were just 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 amazing, and then um, you know things weren't. We probably weren't. I probably wasn't having things run there the way that I want them. Um, one thing that that is common throughout my whole career of having restaurants is. Either I always make terrible decisions with having business partners, right. or I'm a terrible business partner myself. Because <laughs> so um, <laughs> either way, like what do you th- think it is? I well, I'm the common denominator here, so um, <laughs> I, I I'll just say that I think I need to do things alone <laughs> from now on. So um, yeah, the lockdown sort of gave me a chance to relaunch that brand, and it's it's a really strong brand. People love Piri's. Um, and now I've sort of got the freedom to sort of do whatever I want. I'm doing a lot of new specials. I've got like a renewed enthusiasm in, in, in doing it. And with the Mexican food, it can be, um, it can be quite polarizing. So um, people think that because I'm not Mexican, I can't cook Mexican food. They think yeah. it's, a, it's a birthright that you need to be born a Mexican to be able to cook Mexican food. But I've been to a lot of Mexican restaurants with Mexican chefs. And the thing is, I'm, I am a cook. Yeah. And they're not cooks. They've, their mum could make awesome Mexican food and they might have learned from their mum. But a, 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 a mum's recipe doesn't translate to to a restaurant necessarily. Yeah, true. You know? That's so, true. That, that kind of home-cooked stuff is uh, is all fine and well, but yeah, yeah, when you're banging it out for fucking 50, 60, 70 people yeah. a day, man, it changes up. You know? and, the, and the thing about Piri's is it's, it's based on sort of Portuguese Australian cuisine, which is Portuguese chicken burgers, which you can't get in Portugal. I went there looking for them. Um, <laughs> no chance. I was craving it so badly after I'd been here for a, a couple of years. I, so, I literally went to Portugal thinking I get Portuguese chicken. No, it's Australian. So, uh, so this is an Australian delicacy, or it was created in? in uh, so, it, or is it so just the, a the name? story of it is uh, there was two brothers um, from Portugal. We have a, a big Portuguese community. And in and, and, uh, and Sydney or what? In Sydney, yes. Uh-huh. And uh, one of them opened this place. I mean, you can get frango de churrasco, which is a, like a char-grilled chicken, which they put piri-piri sauce on. Mm-hmm. So, hence the name Piri's. So, yeah. So, something like that, which originates in Mozambique, um, from Portuguese settlers in Mozambique, I believe. That's where Nando's comes from. Right, okay. Which is sort of the, the, the trailblazer of the sort of piri piri sauce scene yeah yeah um i've never actually been in Andalus. it's 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 crap yeah it's but it's, it's but they've got a really strong brand so you can find their sauces all over the world in in supermarkets yeah everywhere. yeah, no, um, yeah right but enough, the, the yeah. restaurant itself is it's it's overpriced and the food's rubbish um <laughs> <laughs> hey man i'm so fucking I testify to that, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, even just through just the word of mouth, I testify to that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so these two brothers, they opened, one of them opened this place called a Porto, and another one opened this place called a Galo. And a Porto had this iconic Bondi burger, which is basically what the Piri's, Piri's classic burger is. Right, okay. Um, and it's very simple. It's just breaded chicken, oh, chicken that. breast, lettuce, cheese, aioli, and, and the hot sauce. But dude, it's like, it's not even just, you know what makes the chicken, right? Um, and, and your chicken in particular, man, it's the fucking that it's the crust round the chicken yeah. and the different spices and stuff that, yeah. and because that's the game changing thing, man. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the key to cooking and one thing that I've um, learnt, I was watching um, watching one of your episodes actually this morning about talking about palate and and about oh, and, 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 and when we have a Fraser, yeah, 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 yeah. and um, yeah, yeah. it's it's about having something that's just well balanced. So I'm um, I'm obsessive about seasoning. Okay. And that's one thing that I've, it was actually one of the things I learned at White Trash, Wally, Wally the owner, um, he used to bang on about that all the time and it, it resonated with me a lot, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people, people don't know if something's missing salt, it might be missing salt, it might just be a little pinch of salt that it needs to complete it, yeah. um, but they don't know that they need to add the salt, so you can't leave it to them to, to add that themselves, you know, sometimes yeah. it's a little bit of sugar that brings it out, um, sometimes you need... Um, some bitterness in there, some sour, just just balancing it out, and um, the piri burger and the piri sauce. It's just it's just 
perfectly balanced. It's got mm. a bit of sweetness. Mm, it's bite. it's tangy. Yeah. It's salty. Um, there's some crunch from the lettuce and the chicken. It's just it's it's spicy. It mm. just it just gets all the taste buds going. It's simple. People think they need to add to it because it has like fucking five ingredients and two of them are sauces. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but no, I don't, people don't... come and, and, and I could be making more money off them at, on that first visit where I, they say, I want to add this, 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 this. And I say, stop. If you haven't tried this before, just try the basic one. And, and actually, I think that's something that, that honesty is, is really important in customer service and they'll appreciate the fact that you're not trying to make more money off them. And yeah. I also know that they're going to enjoy the simple basic one more than they would with this one they're pumping money into and then they come back well that's the point man that they come back if they have a chicken right and then they get extra cheese or extra bacon or extra jalapenos or whatever the fuck it is they're going to be like oh it was alright but if you say man go for this that is amazing and they're going to come back that's I mean I think that's the one thing important is in going to a restaurant if you don't have allergies you you if you're at a worthwhile place, you need to trust the chef. You need to trust the cook. Um, like as a boss, are you talking, or as like a as a customer? Not as a boss. No, no, no. As a customer. Right. As a customer. If, if you know, if someone recommends, I mean, I love going. The beauty of Berlin and the scene here is it's we're we're a pretty tight knit community. So yeah, we right. sort of everyone kind of knows everyone. Um, and I like I love going to. I don't often go to restaurants. But when I do, I love going and saying I don't want to see a menu. Mm-hmm. I just want. Yeah, let me just give, give me what's happening. Exactly, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah, most yeah, places yeah. they'll do that. They'll just they'll just you know if you go to a, a nice place. That, I mean, depends. I mean, I either eat at, like nice places or I get junk food like fucking Burgermeister or something. Which yeah, is, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't. I'll choose what I want from there. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so you you got to trust the chef and and trust what they what they recommend. And um, have you got any um kind of uh, allergies, lactose intolerant, all that kind of stuff? Anything? Yeah, me? No. Yeah, yeah, you no, 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 no. I've, I've got I've got iron guts. I'll eat anything. I yeah, don't yeah, care. me too. Me um, too. But it must be like that's that's quite a, like a good thing that we have, you know. Like I can also love I, there's nothing that I don't like. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, you put anything on my plate and I will eat it. It's like I don't actually like like sauerkraut. Like I don't really like it that much, but if I'm at someone's house and I'll, they put it in front of me, I'm fucking scoffing I'll that. eat anything on the plate. That's and, how and, I grew and, up, and, man. And, I mean, look, if someone else will eat it, then it's got some redeemable qualities, right? So I'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, and I've, totally. eat, I've ate some weird shit in Mexico. I ate some, I've eaten some weird shit in, in, in Malaysia and Thailand. And, what are we you talking about? We're talking your... Uh, I've, I've had eye, eyeball tacos, stuff like that. I've eaten plenty of brains. Brain, brain, <laughs> brain, plenty brains, of are brains. brains are good. Brains are good. Brains are um, good. You know, tongue, yeah. tongue tacos are one of, one of the best tacos you can have. I've had cow's um, tongue here in Germany before. It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Cow, uh, beef tongue is amazing. Um... You know, I've I've cooked whole lamb barbacoa, so I'll just say, just give me the whole lamb, and um, and I'll just crack the lamb's head open and eat the brains myself. Now, <laughs> that brain, sounds so sadistic. Brains are great. I mean, it, cook it. I cook it first. I cook it, slow cook it. <laughs> just some, some nice crack open a lamb's head. Just fuck <laughs> again now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you got to sort of got to got to, to trust what they're doing, and um, you know, with puris, I think that that I have that. Whereas with Mexican food. You know, you get a lot of, um, you know, the risk of, of generalizing and, and being maybe a teeny tiny bit racist. Americans, <laughs> Americans sort of, they, they like to, you know, know it all. And, um, what, you know, people and, from the States? Or, yeah, from, yeah. from yes, with, you know, uh, people from San Francisco, uh, yeah, okay, sort of, yeah, yeah. Um, particularly because they consider that to be the sort of capital of Mexican food in the world. Oh, okay, um, and right. so... I once had a guy who I served him a plate of carnitas and that's like our best seller at Santa Maria. And yeah. it's something that I know is good. I just know objectively, this is a fucking great plate of food. Sure. And the guy looked at it and said, that's not carnitas. Yeah, yeah. Bring me something else. Yeah, and but it's, like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and the guy said, trust me, I'm from, I'm from San Francisco. Fuck I, off. And it's like, man, I don't fucking care. I've eaten this shit in Mexico. And this is how they cook it in Mexico. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but that's not kind of because I'm not touching it. I'm like, well, you're fucking paying for it. <laughs> um, and then his friends came and they ate it and complimented me and said how much they loved it. But that that's one thing about Mexican food, which, um, you know, you do you do have this sort of stigma that, that, that you need a Mexican to be cooking it. Um, yeah, you've got, okay. Everyone has their opinion on what so is and that, isn't Mexican. Yeah. And sometimes I'd do my own thing. I'd make, uh, I used to make beef rendang tacos. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I'm make Malaysian food and I made beef rendang tacos. They, they were great. People love them. That was like a favorite, but there's always going to be someone who says that's not authentic. Um, you can't be putting that on tacos. Of course, in Mexico, they'll put whatever the fuck they want on tacos. Sure, you sure. know, it's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
But, and for me, if, with Piri's, it's I can do whatever the hell I want and no one can say shit. For sure. Because huh? it's, it's, me, it's, it's me, I'm putting myself into the food. It's loosely, it originated from the Portuguese chicken burger thing. Um, and now it's, it's just, I'm doing all kinds of weird shit. So, so um, because, I mean, on, you know, if, sometimes people are just douchebags. You know what I mean? Some people, some people are just like they want. They're out with their pals. They think they're better than they actually are. Yeah. It's just these people that are. You know, they've got this this kind of um, what's the best way to describe it? This like kind of disillusioned ego or displaced ego, right? And for those people, that they kind of just want to like call you out on something without having any sort of knowledge behind them going, maybe this person knows more than me. So, I, so when you're trying to put something that's great food in front of them and they're just trying to like play, they're, they're just play that arrogant person. I've had it the same yeah, with like, I, this isn't a whiskey seller. You know? I, I think um, it's probably social media, which is the, the biggest, I mean, it's, it's sort of the, the internet being a platform for people to, to give their opinion. Um, is making people like every everyone, you know, everyone wants to be the center of attention. Yeah. And you do get people on social media, and it's I do all my own marketing and social media now, and it's it's it it gets to me because there's always someone who wants to try and pick something out, or, or I've left something out of a of a of a description, and they're like, what about this? What about this? What about this? I've even had people dig up old menus online and come and try and order off an old menu, and I'm like, that's an old menu. I don't have that no. right. but I found it on the internet and it's like well, okay well, it's a beef cheek dish I don't have beef cheek in stock and it would take me six hours to cook it so like yeah, the yeah. fuck do you want me to do but the thing yeah. is as well like these you know these are just kind of internet warriors keyboard warriors yeah. you know? and they're just and if you're doing your own marketing right it can be uh, really depressing at the best of times man. I mean I, 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 I don't I don't care about reviews um Sort of, I'm, I've Wait, got... Does anyone rally you up? Are you, would you fucking get back and be like that? I, just, I've come close, but I know I've got to be above that. Go, I've got I, to. There's I, no other I, way. No one wins an internet argument. No one. And, and, and if, it's, if, it's, it, if it's social it. media, then you're putting yourself in the spotlight. Yeah. So the, the, the better thing to do is to sort of... Um, you can kill them with kindness. You can make someone look stupid without actually calling them out Dude, um, it is the best way it's, to do it's it, satisfying it's satisfying and then other people will see it um, and then it, it, it just makes you look a lot better and makes that other person just look really stupid if you avoid the fight um, but you can also highlight their stupidity at the same time yeah. um, which <laughs> a little, is a little kind of kick in there yeah, like that, yeah. you know the other day there was someone who was telling me how my a burger was which I was doing for a special I posted something on Instagram and they said that's not what that is. And it's like, okay. Um, you know, then they just kept on going on with it. Um, it was a smash burger. So it's a squashed yeah, yeah, down yeah. beef patty. And they said, those aren't smashed enough. And I'm like, one, well, you know, <laughs> they are. <laughs> you know, it was quite fatty meat. So when you when you cook it, it shrinks up. That's right. It shrivels yeah, yeah. up. So, and, yeah. and I'm like, I'm a, I'm a strong guy. I squashed it myself. And they said, oh, technique, technique. Uh, strength is no, uh, raw power is no match for technique. Oh my and God. I'm like, Okay, I'm just getting out of this. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like it's amazing out, that you can see yeah, so yeah, much from one photo. Um, the the more 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 from one photo than I've seen in 15 years of cooking professionally. I mean, these, you know? yeah, yeah, these are just you know, it's honestly people, that, but these people you could really just you can kind of describe them so easily. They're just the people that sit at home and they've, they've never. They're well, not they, I mean, they're lock, not, they're not a, lockdown. A taste lockdown, I think, is has the whole pandemic thing has just made it. A lot worse, and people people are lonely. People are at home; they've got nothing to do, so they're they're on the, on the internet looking at stuff, and just commenting, I guess, because they want some some attention, some recognition. So yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, uh, here, man, um, I like to kind of uh, ask uh, my guests about uh, a couple of questions that uh, yeah. I'm sure you know, man, already. Um, in this lockdown, the one thing for me that I don't quite often was kind of just go down like kind of like scientific little wormholes like looking mm -hmm. at fucking mental basically it all stems from you know science confuses the shit out of me because uh -huh. I'm, I'm, uh -huh. not, I'm not I'm not brainy enough to understand it all it's just as confusing to me that's supposed to be science is supposed to be where we get all the answers from it's either that or religion yep. fuck that yep. so you go to science and you still don't understand it you seem a little bit lost so I like to feel confused and lost yeah. Can you emphasize that in any way? Uh, I 
can actually. Um, you, you sort of you, you you threw me off with that question when you when when you sent it to me because, because that's random. Because I have the dubious honour in year nine of being the last person in my school at science. I came last. I got twenty eight percent. And it's just in science. Over, over the, in science over yeah. the, over the whole year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at my textbook. For, Did you think I had some prior knowledge to this question? I, 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 I mean, I, 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 I didn't apply myself. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I think I could have done a little better than twenty eight percent. I looked at my textbook for that year, and it said peanut prac at the top, underlined, and that was it. <laughs> that was my. That was my. That's a contribution. That was. Uh, I mean, no, it's a semester, isn't it? So it's half a year. Right. That was. That was it. That was all I did. That was all I wrote in my textbook. For, wow. For Have you still got that textbook? I, I, no, I don't think so. I mean, it could be somewhere. Probably not. Um, I'm not a very um, sentimental person, so that's, <laughs> most, most of my shit in, in Australia is gone. I like that. Okay. So, um, so I, yeah, actually, I started looking up some scientific facts. I mean, okay. I, I work with science, so I have, um, I know how to use science, but I don't understand it. So in the yeah. kitchen, in the kitchen, you use a lot of science. So you're using different heat. Um, I, with my sources and a lot of stuff I do, it's, it's working with emulsification, which I find fascinating. So it's not a scientific fact or theory. It's just something that... Um, oh, no, but I could tell, elaborate on emulsification. So, so if I'm making aioli, which I make frequently, so basically what you're doing is you're binding, uh, uh, you're, you're binding the fat molecules to, um, to the liquid molecules. That's right. right. So, that's so, right. so, so I, I make aioli with soy milk, um, you can use eggs. You can use. There's a number of different things you can use. You can use chickpea juice. Yeah, I, I make. Follow. I make a. I make vegan aioli because I figure if you can make it vegan, you may as well make it vegan. Absolutely. Um, here, in, here. This, in this day and age, here, here. Um, actually, chickpea juice. Uh, we use chickpea juice. We used used to use chickpea juice when we were open for our sours instead of egg white. It's a good one. Um, it's an, it's a perf- it's a perfect alternative. It's it really is. It tastes great. Um, it works. And you know why make a, a whiskey sour? Or any kind of sour, pisco sour, mezcal sour, yeah. that someone who's vegan can't or won't drink. Yeah, you totally may as well right. make it for everyone. <clears throat> I totally so, agree with that. But anyway, so you take these these two liquids. I like I said, soy milk and oil, and I'm pureeing and adding oil to the soy milk, and you know it looks like nothing's happening. It's liquid, 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 and then suddenly, bang! It's thick. Right. Okay. It's like, it's just fascinating. And, <laughs> yeah, and, I like that. I like um, that. With with my sources, I'm doing a sort of kind of weird rumor, reverse emulsification. Um, so you can see, for example, in this one, where it's a bit split, yeah. um, that's because it's been in the bottle for quite a while, but if that means that there's probably not enough water in there. I don't know how that works, but sometimes we'll get it splitting, so you've got the solids and the oil separating. Yeah. And then if I add some water to that while I'm pureeing, it'll rebind. Uh-huh. Um, you can add thickening agents like xanthan gum and stuff like that, which which bind the molecules. I, again, like I don't, I understand how to use the science, mm. but I don't know fucking why. So sometimes I'll be making something, it'll split because it's so then, fucking confusing, man. And then it's like I need to add more oil or I need to add more water. Um, and for me, it's more of an instinctive thing. I sort of will know what it needs, and then um, you can make it happen. Um, but see we see in the cocktail world we do like there's a lot of cooking involved in fact there's been a huge wave of cooks and chefs in the past 10 years mm-hmm. who have went into cocktail because yep. from us we went you know up the way towards the cooking but they're so up here for them making cocktails still like that this is fucking easy mm-hmm. so uh, it's brilliant to see like cooks and chefs behind the bar um, we as co- cocktail keepers uh, cocktail bar keepers well, we're kind of like um you know, we kind of, we do, we do a lot with infusions, mm-hmm. uh, dehydrated fruit. Yep. Uh, you know, we go mental on like syrups, but they're all fairly easy, man. Yeah. You know? You're kind of, uh, yeah, um, ice is another thing that we kind of like, but that's a lot more to do with like cutting. That was, that was and, actually, actually, because <laughs> I did go down a bit of a rabbit hole looking up scientific theories and weird scientific facts so I could have something on the show to impress you with. <laughs> um, and there's the um, Mepenga theory, which is that uh, hot water freezes quicker than cold water. Yeah. Boiling boiling water freezes yeah, quicker yeah, yeah. than cold water. And <laughs> also, uh, because you've known purities in the boiled water, you can get crystal clear ice with boiling water yeah. when you freeze it, you know? Yeah. So it's brilliant. It just yeah. fucks up your freezer. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so if, if someone tried to, if a bartender tried to come and put boiling water in my freezer, they would... <laughs> 
that would that could get ugly. Um, speaking of speaking of that man, uh, things could get ugly. Do you have any? Um, I always ask my guests as well because uh, if they have any kind of weird traits or habits that they have, man, mm-hmm. a lot of people maybe. Uh, you know, un- unwittingly have inherited something from their parents that mm-hmm. they don't really know about. Mm-hmm. Man, have you got any of that shit? Yep. <laughs> I'm obsessive about apostrophes. Oh, really? And the correct usage of apostrophes, which right. was something that my mum banged into me when I was when I was young. Is she, uh, um, is she into grammar or linguistics or she, a teacher? She, she, she's, she's passed away now, but she was, uh, she was, she did study literacy, uh, literacy. She was a nurse. She was a psychiatric nurse, but, right. um, but she was just obsessive about apostrophes, and I inherited that from her. And I, I fucking can't handle misused apostrophes. And so, you, you see it so much here with with plurals. People that put an apostrophe for a plural, just like like, <laughs> oh, it it drives me crazy. I mean, I'm a bit of a grammar Nazi. Um, yeah, like I said, I studied writing. Uh, writing was always my talent at school, and I just it just. A tiny little bit of my soul dies every time I see a, a mission. What's, what's, a, what's, a, what's a perfect example? We talk, your is always one that I always fuck up. You are see, your. Yeah, well, we're sure, use, but no, you know, no, no. The, the, one that get, the, the thing that gets me the most is when people use it for plurals. Right. And you see it a lot here. You'll see a, a, a store that says snacks and more, and it's got an apostrophe. Right. Yeah, snacks. that's ridiculous. And, and it that's just. Ridiculous. But sometimes. So you just come and claim and rip off the apostrophe? Sometimes you get. A list, and they've just put it in one of the words, so they're not even consistent in their own misuse of apostrophes. <laughs> That's and that 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 gets me more because I, I want to get the person and say, "Why the fuck did you put an apostrophe there and not there?" You know, okay, this one's correct. You didn't put it there, but you did put it there. Why the fuck didn't you put it there as well? So what what's your what's your reasoning between? Okay, you know, here's one for you. Like I would, I get confused when I'm doing names. Where does the apostrophe go when it's in names? So like uh, Julian, right? Yep. Is it Julian's, mm-hmm. Julianzies, or Jules, Julesies? I'm going to Julesies restaurant. Okay, so then it would be Jules, and the apostrophe would be after uh, the S. After the S, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. it's because you don't. Otherwise, it's two S's, so that looks stupid. Um, <laughs> I love it. But, 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 I love that, it. but that's it. Um, <laughs> you know, if if Jules is. Um, that's a weird one. Yeah, no, Jules is. If Jules is going. And you say Jules is. Cause Jules, <coughs> yeah, Jules, Jules is coming. Yeah, Jules is. Yeah, no, the, no apostrophe, the apostrophe doesn't work there at all, actually. Um, but yeah, it's it, still look at like the, it, you see it a lot here. And a, a lot of the time, when if a word ends in a vowel, people think that it looks wrong without the apostrophe. So, um, would you ever uh, correct someone? Uh, you get on Facebook and, and, and actually correct someone with this? I, mean, I, try, not, you, I try not to. You try not to, but, but I have. Just, that I fucking, have. You're just, your hands but, are going um, towards the keyboard. But yeah, no, I can't say anything on Facebook at the moment. They just they banned me again yesterday for, th- for 30 days. How, why? Um, I'll tell you why. So, someone, there's, there's this stupid group. Berlin expats and I like to troll on that group a little, a little <laughs> bit a, a little bit and um, so let me I, I took a screenshot of it. Someone, someone asked someone asked how they could um, best transport their cat from the UK to here or right, something okay, yeah. on a plane yeah. and so I just commented um, duct tape them up and stick a straw through for them to breathe and shove them in your overhead luggage works every time and shuts them up too I got, I banned, mean, I got banned for 30 days for, I? For, yeah, yeah so they said uh, your comment goes against our community standards on coordinating harm and promoting crime. It's, it's <laughs> clearly a fucking joke. I don't want anyone to duct tape up their caps. Um, <laughs> Do you know what so did you, I've got a fun fact about duct tapes and caps. Uh, about duct tape and cats. If you put uh, duct tape just on one side of a cat, it will walk around in circles. <laughs> I believe, yeah, I really believe that because they, they use their fur to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That's, see, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, fucking ban me, Facebook. Yeah. Fucking do it. Come on. No, they, they ban... They, I commented on um, anti-vaxxers being... I said the, the anti-vaxxers and the anti-mask people, not particularly anti-mask people, I said they're the same um, white trash that have Confederate flags hanging at the front of their house, you know, about all this stuff going on in the US. Sure. And I got banned for hate speech. Because apparently white trash is um, one of the worst words you can use on Facebook. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is in the Western world. It's which I just find just um, ridiculous. Uh, so did surely someone reported you, and that's why that happened. No, 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 no. Actually, Facebook. It's just a bot. So uh, none of my posts, which I got banned for, which I have six or seven now. I think next time it'll be a year or a lifetime ban. I don't. 
fucking care anymore. Um, Facebook sucks. It does um, absolutely positively it, suck. It gets <clears throat> worse with every update. It's almost unusable now as a business. But um, yeah, no, none of them even made it. They just got picked up by a bot. They pick out keywords and bang. And I've tried to appeal every single one. And I've and because one one of them was actually uh, I commented to a friend. There was a, a place they were um, they'd closed down. And they're clearing everything out, and they had a fridge I wanted. And I said, "Oh, I want that fridge." And then my friend commented, oh, "I want that fridge too." And I said, "Touch that fridge, and I'll fucking kill you." Banned. Oh man, yeah, and it's a friend, talking. a Facebook friend. You know, it's kind it's, of it's, it's kind of uh, it's weird that it's like uh, you know slowly getting like diving into this like you know uh, you know uh, the censoring c- censored speech, completely censored you know completely censored and this is dialogue going on between me and a friend and they've picked out keywords and said that I'm using hate speech you know and um yeah weird, weird. yeah I want to see I want to try and make some cocktails based on like like I'm going to call them now I'll call I'll make a cocktail called white trash maybe or a, or a, or a, or a cocktail called you know um you know gaffer gaffer up your cat <laughs> and just see if they get banned. <laughs> Gaffing your cat. Well, no, I, I think that I'm probably more um, on a list or some shit. Exactly. So I'm, I'm probably get red flagged anytime I post anything. So I, I can't even swear on Facebook anymore. I, I, I mean, I won't dare to just think. I mean, I don't really care. Um, basically, I use Facebook only for trolling and posting pictures of my dog. But <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a lot of business pages. So now I can't comment as my page. What's the name uh, of your dog again? Luxor. Luxor. So she's named after the La- soup. Laksa or Luxa? Luxa. 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 It's, it, she's, she's based on the Malaysian soup that I sort of specialise in making. I like yeah. it, man. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, man. Um, this is the, uh, the wee part of the programme where I just get you to ask me anything you want, man. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what it is you're going to ask me. Yeah, I, I, I thought that I'd just ask a pretty broad question that I know would have affected you in your time here um, and could be potentially quite funny. So what, what's, what's your experience of German efficiency? German efficiency? Okay, so are we talking like the trains run on time or are we talking German no, bureaucracy? I'm talking your, your experience of it. Um, okay, so I'm, my mind is going through a couple of things, right? Because uh, let's think uh, German efficiency through like, uh, you know, trams and trains and transport and stuff. Double thumbs up. Love it, right? When, yeah, when, when, when you can actually get the train you want, it's not replaced by buses. Yeah, sure. But sure. that's more like Berlin, man. But like, see if I'm going to like, you know, traveling down to Dortmund or whatever, yeah. or even like, even like up to Poland or like a little bit through Europe. I've never really had any issues, you know? I mean, the, the rest of Germany... <clears throat> probably lives up a little bit more to the whole efficiency thing. Yeah. Um, but um, in terms, my mind's going towards like efficiency with people. That can become a bit laborious at times, man, you know, because um, German people are very, um, you know, they're very, they kind of need things to be done in a bit. I'm wondering if there's like a whole, like the majority of the nation of Germany have still to be diagnosed as having OCD or like ADHD or something like that, you know, because they're just so like, kind of, <clears throat> oh no, you, you can't do that. That's, uh, I think that um, something which it seems in the German nature is their natural response is just to say no. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. To, you know, yeah. can you do this? No, not possible. It's like, okay. Yeah. But you could if you did this. I'll give you the best example. So I'm going up to, this only happened a couple of days ago, I'm going uh, for other reasons, I went up to the hospital to give like a lot of blood at the moment, mm-hmm. right? Just because I'm doing part of this medical experiment thing. It's a lot of fun, getting money, it's rocking, right? Um, but after you get your blood taken, uh, they give you a free sandwich and you can choose from four sandwiches. And I just went and, uh, you know, I always take my sandwich and give it to a homeless person, mm-hmm. right? Why not? It's like fucking seven o'clock in the morning, I'm on the U-Bahn, no one's there, there's always like people sleeping rough, it's minus 10 outside, so I'm going to give my sandwich to a homeless person. So I go up to the little desk and she goes, what sandwich do you want? And I go, it doesn't matter. And her immediate response, like just completely, right, without a moment of thought, is like, there's no such thing as it doesn't matter. Oh my God. And you're just like, <sighs> like, you know, in German it was like that, oh, egal, and she's like, gibbs, egal gibbs nicht. And you're like, and I was like, well, look, it really genuinely doesn't matter because I'm not going to eat it anyway. And she was like, that. Well, what do you mean? I was like, "Ah, like, I'm going to give it to someone else. And like that. Well, you can't do that. And I was like, well, I'm going to give it to someone homeless. That's I usually take my sandwich and give it to someone homeless because it's like a forty minute journey. I usually see someone. Um, blah blah blah. And she was like, that. Well, um, you know, these are sandwiches for the people that give blood. I was like, you know what? Today I'm hungry. And I would like to take a sandwich. 
How, what sandwich is it that you've got the most of that you want to get rid of? And she was like, you know, just oh, kind of huffing away. And then I finally got a fucking sandwich out of it, but not without, like, you would think, you, as well as something that came to my mind there as well, like, a lot of Germans are very much about doing something very efficiently rather than fun, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just go, like, sometimes I go around the long way of doing something because it's more fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I can think of one example where I'm on my bike with a couple of people and we're going from, we're bar hopping. And we're going along and they're like, and we had a fucking about a half hour discussion when we got to the bar about, yeah, but Chris, you went along the cobbles and you've done like a zigzaggy thing. And to be honest, we could have just went straight and done like an L shape along the road. It's quicker <laughs> the traffic. And so I was like, guys, did you have more fun going along the cobbled streets? And they were like that. Yeah, but they just couldn't understand yeah, 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 but yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, fun doesn't come into the equation. Sometimes it's just good to just do something for the sake of doing it. You of know course I mean? it is. But yeah, uh, spontaneity and... Um, you know, fun, unplanned things are not really. It's not in the really German in the side. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not in the repertoire, you know. And I don't want any fucking German shame here. It's just a fucking observation. It's, you know? it, no, it's it's funny. <clears throat> there, um, they Germans. Germans like to plan things. Um, I mean, they they have fucking budgets. Do you have a budget? I don't have fucking money. If I've got money, I've got money. If I don't, like... Would you, yeah, would you well, they, they'll say, you know, I can't afford that. It doesn't fit into my budget. Or, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, need to, I need to work this many hours a week to meet my budget. Um, it's like, what do you fucking mean? Like, you know, I only want to work 27 hours or I want to work this many hours. Like, just why don't you work as much as you can? Because you've got heaps of cash and you go blow it on the weekend. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Why would you go and spend all your money on the weekend? It's like, what the fuck else you can do with Yeah, money, exactly, you know? man. But that's that, I think that does come from like a kind of, uh, that also comes from that kind of conservative, older generation of Germans that are like in their 50s, 60s, essentially the people that we know, their parents. Yeah. They, they are very conservative with their money. They're very much like, but I own a house and a car. Why don't you own a house and a car? And you're like, because man, I'm from Scotland, mate, right? From Glasgow, we don't have that shit. That's not on a you know a prerogative right away, like yeah. straight off the bat. You know, you're coming like I always find it interesting that Germans uh, they study forever. Oh god, until they're 27, 28. <laughs> I've had people you know apply for a job and they're like, yeah, this is my first job, and I'm like, the fuck do you mean? Like, oh, I was <laughs> like, I was studying, and I'm like, so. <laughs> I was like, I, I was, I, I started working when I was fucking fourteen yeah, years totally, old. Totally, and I had, I had two jobs at uni. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's normal. I mean, it's I normal. Worked, I, when I was at uni full time at uni, I worked in the bookies and I worked at uh, cleaning offices in the mornings. Yeah. They said, but but how did you study? It's like I just fucking Got, just yeah, just did a bit of study. I went to some classes, worked. Uh, I was I was able to get really fucked up as yeah, well of course and pass and get like a uni degree yeah and uh, and still work and make some money man get, pay, pay for my way no but my parents pay for they, they also get um, a hell of a lot of government support I think at, at, at the age of 26 or 27 you're you're considered independent <laughs> yeah yeah you get you get, uh, you get something get, called kinder girl yeah. right up until you're 25 that's, that's insane yeah yeah that's yeah that's insane um, and it's like four or five hundred quid a month I think my parents stopped giving me pocket money as soon as I was old enough to get a fucking job. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I was getting, <laughs> soon as I was getting a paper round at 14, my parents yeah, were like, uh, yeah, I think we'll be holding up that yeah. five pounds a week that you get, yeah. or every two weeks, whatever it was, I can't remember. Um, anyway, man, that was glorious. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we had a good time. I'm glad, awesome. I'm glad for having you on, man. Um, this is the beast. This, this is the oh, beast right. of, the, of the sauces. And in, ca in case you don't have enough Neil Numb paraphernalia, Oh, so it's yeah, a senior a bar show. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Piri's Piri's bar blade. I love you know, it, man. Yeah. Thank you, mate. thank you very much for yeah. that. As a barkeeper, that will go to a lot of good use, yeah. man. That will go to a lot of good use. Thanks, pal. I appreciate that. That's a good design, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, listen, guys, uh, have a wee uh, look in your peripherals uh, where you can see a deep dive. It's the link to the Mescal Negroni. There's also a link to Buy Me a Coffee. That's where all the other podcasts are. Comedy sketches, recipes more stuff to see have a cruise at your own leisure in the meantime thank you Jules for coming along yes, man pleasure and uh, I will see you again stay tuned <laughs>